struggling with the worthiness of God, you see somebody who is saying he ain't worth all that. He ain't worth me clapping my hands. He ain't worth me lifting my hands. I, folks might be embarrassed. Folks might look at me like I'm less than a man, and and I'm not. I'm not willing to chance all of that for him. But when you know it was nobody else that got you over, when when you know that it wasn't the doctor who got you out, you know that it wasn't the medicine that got you out. Because you were there when you prayed. You were there when you called on his name. And after you called on his name, then you saw the deliverance coming. And so you couldn't care less about what nobody think. You've made up in your mind that you are worth me lifting my hand. You're worth me running laps around the church. You, you're worth it, God. Turn, turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 4, verse 5. Romans chapter 12. A uh, couple verses there, 4 and 5. Here's, here's what chapter 4, chapter 12 at verse 4 says. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. You could even say belong to one another. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, God, for this moment in time. We're going to thank you, Lord, for yesterday. We're going to thank you, Lord, for tomorrow. But we're grateful for right now. Right now, God, that you have given us a reasonable portion of our health and strength that we're clothed and we're in our right mind, that we can look at Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5, and understand what you are saying to the church. I pray now, God, that you would put preaching in my mouth, and I pray, God, that you would make it so that every one of us have eyes that see. Every one of us, Lord, have ears that hear, and every one of us, God, have hearts of flesh that can feel what you are saying to the church on this morning. God, touch our hearts with the truth of your word, and we thank you for it, and we pray in the name that is above every name, and all of us who love the Lord said, in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Now, I know you all know the codes, because all of us live by, we live by codes. And uh, when the codes have been established, you do not, under any circumstances, violate the codes. You got some codes in your house. I didn't grow up with you, but I know that in your house, there are some codes. The codes are, if you are the last one to use it, then it's your responsibility to put it back. Whoever has the remote control is in charge of the television, unless you're married. Um, you, you, you can, um, there, there's some, there, there's a, if you are the last one, you took the last paper towel off the roll, the, the code in the house is go to the closet, take that piece of cardboard off and hang another roll of paper towel where, where the paper towels go. Is that a code in your house? You use the last off the toilet paper. Um, y'all, y'all not gonna help me here. Uh, if you use it, clean it. Uh, round the house, there's a code that says everybody has to carry their own weight. You might not do what I do, but you gotta do something. I might not clean where you clean. I might not wash where you wash. I might not do what you do, but if you gonna live in this house. 
Those are just some of the household codes. And Paul, throughout Scripture, writes about codes. They're, they're man codes. A man doesn't think much about you if your handshake is weak. I'm just telling you about, about, about man. Man, man men, men have codes of the way that we deal with one another. And Paul is writing through Scripture, throughout the New Testament, giving us these codes on how you're supposed to act toward one another. Now, you know, in Broadway, they have plays, and uh, each Broadway play typically has um, somewhere around 30 people that are part of the cast. There's the lead actor, they're supporting actors, they're actors with roles that where they get to say something, they're actors who are on the side and don't get anything to say. They have non-speaking roles, but they're all a part of the play. And if the play is going to be as successful as it's supposed to be, everyone must play their role. You got a role to play if they're paying you to be in the play. So everybody is supposed to do. And those people who have paid to sit in the audience and watch the Hamilton or watch Lion King or watch whatever the play is, they want to see everybody in the play do what they're supposed to be. You're supposed to do your part. You are no longer, when you're in the play, you're no longer working as an individual. You are now a part of a cast of people who are trying to pull off a production that all of the patrons, all of those people who have paid their money can walk out saying that was one of the best plays I've ever seen. The cast is no longer individuals, but a unit working with one single purpose, with one single focus, and then Today's message is the first of a series of sermons entitled, The Code. How to treat one another. And the one another is in parentheses. Because each one of these passages says to us, love one another. Pray for one another. Be there for one another. Every passage, Paul lifts up this idea of one another. We have a responsibility one to another. There are written codes and there are some unwritten codes. Um, you, you don't know the written codes and the unwritten codes and have any sense of decency about yourself and just willingly violate the codes. Here's what happens when you willingly violate the codes that you mess up community. There's a certain level of harmony that happens when you know the codes and you live by the codes. Now, uh, can I get to the title of the day the, the, for this passage? The title of this sermon is How to Belong to One Another. How to Belong to One Another. Two major points that you're going to see me lift out of verse 4 and out of verse 5. And then there's going to be some application, something for us to do with those two things that we see lifted out of verse 4 and out of verse 5. And here's what I want you to see, that number one, that, that the body of Christ is one. Say that with me. The body of Christ is one. Some folks would have you believe that the body of Christ is divided. That's not what the text says. The text says that we are many different people, but we come together to be one body. So here's what Paul is doing. Paul is taking a comparison of the human body and comparing it to the church body. 
Paul says, in the human body, you've got a whole lot of parts to your human body, but it makes up one body. He says, you have a brain, you have lungs, you have a stomach, you have a pancreas, you have a liver, you have kidneys, you've got hands, you've got fingers, you've got thumbs, you've got toes, but it's all one body. It's one body. The, the hand can't be, can't act like it's not a part of the rest of the body. He says, in the human body, you got a whole lot of parts. In the church body, you got a whole lot of members. The organs and the parts of the body have different functions. They've got different assignments. In the church body, you've got different members, but they've got different gifts. Everybody in the body of Christ does not have the same gift. Every, every, perp, every part of the human body has at least one function. The brain thinks. The stomach digests food. The eyes see. The ears hear. The heart beats. The kidney cleans the blood, the lung Oxy, puts oxygen in the blood. Every body, every part of the body, y'all say that with me, it has a function. Can I share with you in the body of Christ, everybody in the body has a function. Everybody. Whether you do your job or not doesn't determine that you got one. You got one. Um, all the members in this human body, all the members belong to this one body. Wouldn't it be great uh, if the body of Christ recognized that though we are many, we form one body? It ain't no two churches. It ain't no three churches or four churches. It's one body. I'm, I'm in scripture here. Look in your Bible. Verse 4 says, we who are many are one body. We're one body. We're one body. We're, we're not a whole lot of them. We belong to one body. In, in the human body, the body parts belong to one another. Can I walk slow here? When the eyes see, the eyes don't see for themselves. The eyes see for the whole body. When the lungs breathe, they don't breathe for themselves. They breathe for the whole body. When the brain controls the central nervous system, it does not do that for itself. It does it for the whole body. Here's Paul's analogy. He's saying just like we have a human body with many parts, we have a Christ body, a body of believers, and when the body is functioning and it belongs to one another, you do not take the gifting that God has given you and not use it for the benefit of the rest of the body. The preacher who understands that he has a God-given ability to preach does not preach for himself. He's preaching for the benefit of the body. The person who has the gift of laying on of hands does not use their gift for themselves. But they lay their hands on for the benefit of others. Those who've been gifted with mercy use that mercy. To be a blessing, y'all not going to help me in here, to be a blessing to those who are in the body. Can I tell you that when you understand that we are one body, that the members of the body, here's what I want you to know, the eyes meet the need of the body. The lungs and the ears and the pancreas and the stomach and the liver and the kidneys all meet the needs of of the body. And Paul is saying, God has given you gifts. 
Y'all ain't going to help me here. You have your gift for the benefit of the church that you go to. You, you, listen, it's true whether you say amen or not. Uh, it's true. So, so the body is like the human body. The body of Christ is like the human body. Can I tell y'all what 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 says? L look at this. You can look it up if you want to. But here's what it says. The body is a unit. And though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. Look at this. He's still comparing it to the body of Christ. So it is with Christ. So it is with all of y'all that have come to the knowledge of who Christ is, you are one. You got a problem. I have a problem if I come with my gifting to the body and don't see myself belonging to the rest of the body. Belong. Because it's one body. I need to tell you this because there are folks who are guilty. And when you look in scripture, there is, particularly in Galatians, there is something called heresy, and there's another word, seditions. Heresy is to run with false teaching, but seditions is to cause division in the body. Uh, and the church has to work hard to keep from being divided. It has to work hard to keep from being a young church and an old church. It has to work hard to keep from being an inner city church and a suburban church. Paul says, you are one body. It ain't a woman's church and a man's church. It's one church. It's one body. Would y'all say it with me? It's one body. Now, that, that leads me to the second thing. And the second thing is that the body of Christ belongs to one another. It's one body, but all the members of the body belong to one another. And though the body is comp comprised it's made up of many people. The many people belong to one another. The, the many people are connected to one another. And if, if the members of the body are at their best, they are functioning within the body of Christ. Can you imagine how the human body would work if the heart decides it ain't going to beat. Can you imagine how the human body works when the lungs say, I ain't going to breathe? Can you imagine how the body works when the eyes say, I ain't going to see? When, when the ears say, I'm not going to hear. When the stomach says, I'm not going to digest food. The pancreas is saying, I'm not going to secrete insulin. Uh, Y'all hearing me? When, when the sweat glands say, I don't care how hot you get, I'm not going to, I'm not going to secrete sweat. But when, when you understand, the body knows now, the parts of the human body know that they have one function. God, Paul is preaching good here. Here's what he says. When you understand that your function is for the betterment of the body and can't nobody do your job like you do it because God has given you your job. The eyes can say, I would be selfish not to see because the body needs me to see. Y'all not saying anything in here. If the eyes won't see in the human body, there is no sight in the body. If the ears won't hear, there is no hearing in the body. When the members of the body of Christ refuse to use their gifting, then 
the body of Christ suffers. But when I belong, when I belong, I know the body needs my gift. The body functions because of my gift. Listen, this, this text says all members have not the same function. Now, I know y'all are deep. Y'all already studied this passage, and you've already looked at it. And so I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. When the passage says all members do not have the same function, here's what the passage says. All of us, all of the members of the body don't do the same thing. Can I unpack this a little bit further? Here's what he says is that God gives each member of the body of Christ a specific function. The eyes only see. The ears only hear. The lungs only breathe. The, 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 the pancreas only secretes insulin. You, you hear what I'm telling you? Therefore, every member of the body of Christ must know what is it that I've been designed to do. Can I walk slow here? When the church is in trouble is we have people who don't belong to the body because they don't know what they've been designed especially to do and they don't do it for the body. But when I belong, I know what I'm made for. I know what I bring to the body, and I make it my business to bring it. The eyes ain't trying to hear. They know that's not their function. The ears aren't trying to see. They know that's not their function. And can I tell y'all, when you belong to the body of Christ, you, you, I'm not talking about you go to the church. I'm talking about you belong. There, there, there's, there, there's a function within my church that I can feel. Y'all hear me? When, when, when you understand that I got giftings from God and I belong to one another, I belong to them and they belong to me, I bring something to them and they bring something to me and together we form the church that God has called for us to be. Can I tell you this? Uh, when, when you belong, you know what you do. You, you figured it out. And you've also figured out what you don't do. That's why I stay out the choir, because that, that ain't where I'm gifted. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to be gifted in those areas where God has given me some gifting. And it's important for you, it's important for me to work in those areas where we've been gifted. Not just because I like it, but the body needs me. If I won't be eyes, the body won't see. If I won't be ears, the body won't hear. Because can't nobody do what I do like I do it. And that's not being arrogant. That's simply saying that God places the members in the body where he wants them to be. We function. We operate to meet the needs of the body. In the natural, no one wants to have anything in their body amputated. You ever thought about that? They could tell you, listen, that baby toe, it got gangrene in it. And uh, you don't amputate that. It's going to mess around and get gangrene in your whole foot. So if we take the toe off, we can save your foot. And I know that you would still be in a place, even with thinking about losing your baby toe, that you would think hard about, do I really want to let them cut this baby toe off? Uh, now, if I'm struggling with letting them amputate any piece of my natural body, 
Why are we so fast to amputate people in the body of Christ? Why you cut people off so fast? If we are belonging, if we belong to one another, if we belong to one another, and I can want to save that crusty baby toe. I don't want them to cut that off. Why doesn't it bother me when we're cutting off folks? I submit to you, perhaps it's because we don't belong to one another. I want to keep you all, I want to keep you in, in, in 1 Corinthians. This is a long passage, but I want you to look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those are, are parts of the body that seem to be weaker. Um, uh, on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. We cannot get rid of them. And the parts that, that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. Those stuff you cover up with underwear, you treat that with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, that part you don't cover up with clothes, you don't do anything special to that. But God has combined the members of the body and given greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body. But that its parts should have equal concern for each other. When you are, when you belong to one another, you have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, catch this now, every part suffers with it. You can't have a heart attack that don't affect the whole body. You can't have a head cold and the whole body not feel sick. You can't have a lung ailment and the whole body not suffer. When you belong to one another, and somebody that's a part of your body that belongs to your body is suffering. How do you not suffer with them? If one part is on it, every part rejoices with it. Uh, Dan Daniel ain't my son, but I'm excited that he's going off to college because he belongs to us. There's another young lady, I've been wrecking my brain for two days now trying to remember, but she had like a 4.8 a couple weeks ago when we said, Shawnees. All right, I couldn't remember her name, but a 4.8, I'm as proud of her as, as I could be of anybody else in my blood family. When one of us is doing well, because we belong to one another, all of us are doing well. When one of us is going through, because we belong to one another, all of us are going through. Now, there are two major things that I want y'all to get this now. There are two important truths that, that must be understood if we are going to belong to one another. If you're going to belong to one another, you first got to get this. And that is that the body must see that it needs every part or every member. You don't see the human body rejecting nothing on the body. It, it, it wants the lungs. Your body wants your brain. It wants your pancreas. It wants the liver. It wants the kidney. There's no part of your body that your body doesn't want. There has to be within the body of Christ a desire for everybody. The truth is that ain't where we are. There's some folks we don't care nothing about. Yeah. 
I know I'm right. I've been in church long enough. That's the truth. We don't care about everybody. We should care about everybody, but we don't care about everybody. And this is what Paul is saying. When you have members of your church that you don't care about, you're violating the code. violating um, uh, in, in the streets in the 80s and the 90s that, that's what we would say you violate and, and you can't violate by coming to the body of Christ but not treasuring everyone that's the first thing but then secondly every member every person who is a part of the body of Christ must see that the body needs you. Now we don't do that either. We don't do that because there are too many of us who refuse to see that the body needs me. Can I tell you why I know that's true? Because we show up for what the body can do for us. We don't ever show up saying, what does the body need from me? And I'm not talking about folks who just now started walking with Jesus. I understand you don't know what God has gifted you to do when you just came. Some of us, though, been, been here for a minute. Yeah. Uh, the young folks would say, you've been here for a brick. You, you've been around for a while, and you still don't know what your job is. Can you imagine eyes that don't know they're supposed to see? Ears that don't know they're supposed to hear. Now the ears work, they just won't, they won't hear. We got folks in the body of Christ who come and be a part of the body, but do nothing for the body. You know what that is? That's someone who's saying, I don't care to be a functioning part of the body. At some point, you got to say, Lord, I know you made me a part of the body because you got something that you want me to do for the body. What's my job? I don't want Sister Nancy's job, but what is my job? I don't want Reverend Johnson's job, but what's my job? You've given me something in my church to do. While I'm getting on your nerves... Let me just tell you, you don't really embrace the idea of belonging when you won't bring your gift to the body. The body needs what I bring. Every part of the body knows that God has given me this gift so that I can give it to the body. Can I tell y'all this? The, the mother who understands what she's supposed to be doing, even when the children get on her last nerve, she understands her role in the family. They, they don't even say children, they say cheering. He's cheering. Uh, and she goes to bed with a sense of accomplishment because her role in the family, she did it. That father who plays the role of the father, that, that, that man who says, ain't nobody else in this family can be the man like I'm supposed to be the man and I bring what I bring even if the people that I bring it to don't appreciate how much it costs me to bring it. There are some folks who are in the body of Christ who have never taken the time to figure out how do I bring what I bring. Now, what about you? Are you like that teenager who wants to live in the house, soak up the air condition, run the water, open your refrigerator as often as they want, sleep in their room, but not make any contributions toward the household. Now, isn't it strange 
that we can't stand the 12 year old who wants to live in our house, eat our food, burn our lights, burn up the gas, take baths, and, and I don't know why when they get 14, 15, the baths gotta take so long. <coughs> they wanna drink half a bottle of water and leave the half a bottle of water all over the house. Um, but 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 they don't they don't want to make any contributions to the house. All they want to do is play the game. All they want to do is be on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. And uh, they, they, but but uh, they don't want to make any contributions to the house. Now, isn't it strange that the child who wants to live in your house but don't want to make any contributions to the house that gets on your nerves? But you don't see the same thing when it comes to the person who wants to hear good singing, wants to hear good preaching. You better have the air conditioning cold, and you better have the live stream right. But they don't want to make any contributions. Some of us act just like teenagers. Uh, here's what Jesus says in Acts chapter 20. It's recorded that Jesus says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Maybe this would give you some some incentive. It might be some incentive to move. If I thought of that person who doesn't belong to the body, that, that person who's a part of the church but doesn't belong to the church, if we thought of ourselves as cancer. See, because in the human body, Cancer wants to be in the body, but unlike the eyes, it doesn't want to contribute to the body. It wants to hide out in the body, and for real, what cancer is trying to do is live in the body without even being detected that it's in the body. There are folks who want to be in the church, but they don't want it detected that they are in the church. I just want to come in. I want to get from the body what I can get from the body, but I don't want to make any contributions to the body. That's cancer. And can I tell you this? Cancer will low-key kill the body. As long as cancer gets to hide in the body, it doesn't just sit there. It grows while it's in the body. It's destructive to the health of the body. And so you might be thinking, well, no, I don't really belong. But what's the big deal? You're subtracting from the health of the body. Every time we run our mouths against the body, I'm acting like cancer. Every time I tear down what my church is trying to do, I'm acting like cancer. Every time I shut my checkbook and say I ain't giving them a dime, y'all ain't going to hear me here, I'm acting like cancer. And God doesn't want us to be like cancer. He doesn't want us being in a place where we're, we're hiding out without making any contributions. Now, y'all have cookouts, and uh, they're, they're, there's a code. There's a code. Uh, I, I've never been to your cookout, but I know you got, you, got, you got codes. And one of the codes is when you've been invited to the cookout, you understand the code is, what can I bring? 
uh, we, we got it covered, don't worry about it. And you go to the store and you buy something anyway. Because I'm not coming to your cookout empty-handed. That's, that's just, you understand the code. And if I go buy something, I'm getting something good to bring to the cookout. I'm not, I'm not just coming. I'm coming with something where they say, hey, who bought this? Where did this come from? Because that was good. That's the code. Don't, don't bring trash to the cookout. Because if you bring trash to the cookout, the code is we're going to talk about you bringing trash to the cookout. You don't get to bring trash and then think we're not going to talk about you. That's the other part of the code. If you bring trash, we're going to talk about that you bought some trash. <laughs> you know, when, when somebody invites you over their house, you are obligated. To say, listen, before we get out of here, is there something I can help you with? Can I wash the dishes? Can I sweep the floor? Can I take the trash out? I'm not, I'm not packing up five plates. That's, that's part of the code. I'll take a plate if you say it's okay to take a plate. But I'm only taking one plate. And my plate ain't going to be running over because if I ran the plate over, I'm violating, I'm violating the code. Y'all got some folks in your house that don't know how to not violate the code. Every time the code comes around, all they do is violate the code. And you go, I, I, I bet you next time I invite some folks over, I won't be inviting you. Even if they tell you, no, I got it, I'm, I'm a clean up afterwards, you say, you sure it ain't nothing I can help you with? You sure you don't want me to help you wash the dishes? Can I help you load the dishwasher? Can I sweep? I, can I do something, right? Because that's, that's just the code. You show some type of way that you appreciate. I got something to bring. And so here, here comes now when we look at the, the, the body of Christ and this code that each one of us has a responsibility to belong, a responsibility to bring something to the body, that's where we see Jesus. Because Jesus looks at the body of Christ and recognizes that he has a function that can't nobody else do. Uh, Moses came, but he couldn't do what Jesus was going to do. Abraham came, but he couldn't do what Jesus was going to do. Isaiah came, Jeremiah came, Malachi came, but none of them could do. In fact, because they couldn't do it, Jesus needed to come. And, and he looks at the church and he says, the church needs a savior. The church needs somebody who will die, not like the bull, not like the ram that has to die every year. The church needs somebody who can die once and for all. And so he allows them to walk him up the Via Della Rosa. He allows them to hang him on a cross. He allows them to bury him in Joseph's borrowed tomb so that he could belong to the church. You got a responsibility. To belong. What would happen if all of the members went from being members to being people that belong? Paul says, belong to one another. Bring your gifting and en enrich your church. Make your church stronger. I grew up in the inner city, D.C. And in the inner city, D.C., you would see something on the playground pretty regularly. We would choose up teams in order to play full court basketball. And inevitably, we only needed 10 people, five players on each team. And sometimes there was only one ball on the playground. And sometimes the person who bought the ball wasn't one of the 10 that was picked. So they got a choice now. I can sit here even though I wasn't picked and let them play with my ball 
or they could do what they would do, which is y'all ain't going to, I'm not sitting here watching y'all play with my ball. If I can't play, give me my ball, I'm going home. There's some folks in the body of Christ who have decided I'm going to take my ball and go home. And God is saying, no, bring your ball back. You got giftings that the body needs. Your church needs. Can I move to application? Each one of us ought to examine our lives as a member of the church and look for my God-given ways. What is it that God has given me that I can serve my church using my spiritual gifting? There's some gifting that I have. And I belong when I use my gifts for my church. Now, if you're a month from now and you still haven't figured out how to use your gift for your church, Lucy would hear Ricky say, Lucy, something is wrong. <laughs> something wrong. When you've been a part of God's church for a long time and you still haven't figured out what you are designed for to bring to the church. Bring it. We need you. And we need you to belong. I know you're doing virtual church, but we need you to belong. I, I, I know you, you're not comfortable coming back into the building, but there's something that you can do from wherever you are I know you're not 20 yet, but belong. Bring what you have. You can bring what you have no matter what your age is, no matter what your level of spirituality is. I'm just learning, but you belong. Take, your, take some time this week. I would encourage you to do it today. Before you close your eyes and sleep tonight, Spend some time saying, Lord, what am I supposed to be doing for my church? What would I do that makes me belong to the other members? What are their needs that I'm specifically designed to meet? That, that makes sense? All right, let's pray. God, we do thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this morning grateful, Lord, for your word. We're grateful for Romans chapter 12. We're great, grateful, Lord, for verses 4 and 5. And grateful, God, for how you opened our eyes that we might see, that you opened our ears that we might he hear, and that you've touched our hearts that we might feel. God, I pray for your people. Pray, Lord, for me, that although I know that I'm called to teach, called to preach, and called to pastor, that you would help me, God, to see how I could belong even more. What else is it that you have in me that I can bring to the church at large, but specifically to SFNBC? What else, Lord, is it in me that, that is untapped that you want to use for your glory in your church, helping it to become even greater one body? We love you today, and we honor you in Jesus' name. Would y'all stand as we pray to go home? Communion? Oh, I'm, I'm ready to go. All right. Woo. All right. Um. We need, we need, we need, we need the cups. All right. Somebody that can see, come help us with uh, reading the communion. Don't, don't. One of the ministerial staff that can see, come, come read the. Uh. Romans chapter 
Amen.